السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته ورحمة الحمد لله شريف زي ما بتتكلم black clotting especially mechanisms of black clotting so a company of black that involves in black clotting is normally the platelets so today I want to take you through the Mechanism, the process of blood clotting, how it takes place, that mechanisms of blood clotting. So, so this process occurs when blood vessels are damaged. So, what happens is that when uh, blood vessels are damaged, when uh, blood vessels are damaged, the platelets exposed to air. So what happens is that when the blood vessels are damaged, the platelets are exposed to air. Uh, or on exposure to air, what happens to the platelets? When the platelets are exposed to air, this causes this causes the platelets to rupture. Causes the platelets to rupture, disintegrates, releasing so the platelets which normally gathers when the blood vessels are injured if the platelets are exposed to air and on exposure to air what happens to the platelets? The platelets rupture or disintegrates, releasing, releasing releasing the what is called the thromboplastin or thrombokinase release. So what can happen when uh, the thromboplastin or uh, the thrombokinase are released? So what happens is that this thromboplastin the thromboplastin the thromboplastin initiates or facilitates the conversion of prothrombin prothrombin so an enzyme prothrombin which is an active form into into thrombin into thrombin the active form in the presence of uh, in the presence of vitamin in the presence of calcium ions in the presence of calcium ions and vitamin K in the presence of so for the conversion for the, the conversion of uh, the prothrombin prothrombin is caused by the thromboplastin the thromboplastin is released by the platelets when it was exposed to air after the blood vessels were damaged. So this thromboplastin now converts the essential conversion of thrombin in active form to thrombin, the active form in the presence of one, the calcium ions and the vitamin K. Calcium ions and the vitamin K. So now the, the thrombin, thrombin, Starts soluble fibrinogen, soluble fibrinogen into insoluble fibrin fibers, into insoluble fibrin fibers, into insoluble fibrin fibers. So the thrombin now converts soluble fibrinogen that is found in the blood into insoluble, into insoluble fibrin fibers. So now the the meshwork, the meshwork, the meshwork of fibrin fibers. Because at that moment the, the blood vessels is damaged and the blood is oozing. So the meshwork of the fibrin fibers, the insoluble one, 
of the brain fibers, the soluble one, throughs blood cells. Throughs blood cells. Throughs blood cells to form the brain coat. To form and the blood vessels down and the blood and the blood normally flows. So what happens is that once the soluble fibrin or dead is converted to insoluble fibrin fibers, now the network of these fibrin fibers traps blood cells to form a fibrin clot, a fibrin clot, a fibrin clot. So the serum, normally serum, serum is a a plasma without fibrinogen. It's a plasma without fibrinogen. So it goes all this out of the, all this out through the clot. All this out through the clot. Through the clot and hardens and hardens upon exposure upon air to, so as to form to form a scalp to form a scalp to form serum which is a plasma without fibrinogen normally oozes through the clot the clot the fibrin clot and uh, when it is exposed to air it normally hardens to form a scalp that is, you know, when uh, you have a wound after some times, there is a hard cover that, that forms. That part that forms is called the scar. The scar. So this scar, uh, it, it prevents the entry of uh, pathogens. The entry of pathogens. So the plays an important role apart from the conversion of uh, prothrombin into thrombin. It also the thromboplastin. Uh, Thromboplastin, thromboplastin also neutralizes, neutralizes heparin, neutralizes heparin. This is a anticoagulant, anticoagulant, which occurs naturally in the blood, in the blood. That occurs naturally in the blood. And coagulant. So, so as we initiate the process of clotting, it is also so it plays a role. Apart from the conversion of thrombin into thrombin, also it neutralizes the the heparin, which is anti coagulant, which naturally which is, forms naturally in the body, that forms naturally in the body, which forms in the blood. One prothrombin. Is formed in the liver. It is formed in the liver. It is formed in the liver under the influence, under the influence of vitamin K. So this prothrombin it is formed in the liver under the influence of vitamin K. Also, fibrinogen. Fibrinogen, the insoluble one, the, the soluble fibrinogen is only converted, the soluble one, insoluble fibrin fibers, insoluble, the insoluble fibrin fibers only when the when a blood vessel is damaged, when a blood vessel is damaged, when a blood occurs in uh, an injured blood vessel. If it occurs in an injured blood vessel, that's a normal blood vessel, what will happen? Normally it forms clot. It forms a clot and therefore leads to blockage of blood. So it leads to blockage and therefore can cause death. So that's why it only occurs when a blood vessel is damaged. So also heparin, heparin, the anti the anti coagulant prevents conversion of prevents conversion of prothrombin prothrombin into thrombin that may be formed accidentally 
So because we know that if there will be no cars, obviously it will convert fibrinogen into fibrin fiber, and that will can cause a, a clot in a normal blood vessel and then lead to breathing. So to avoid that, we have the heparin and coagulant, which prevent the conversion of uh, prothrombin into thrombin. The conversion of thrombin. So next, what are the importance of blood clotting? Importance of blood clotting. Importance of prevents one important of blood clotting is prevents excessive bleeding. Prevent excessive bleeding. Another importance is that prevents prevents entry of pathogens into the blood. Prevents entry of because uh, we know when the blood clotting uh, takes place, this formation of scalp which prevents the entry of pathogens to the injured surface. And lastly, the last important of uh, blood clotting is initiates initiates healing process, initiates healing process of damaged blood vessel or damaged, damaged blood vessel. So the blood clotting process. So also, this also important point we have to know is that there are sometimes here I think you may heard of that there are individuals here that when uh, they have even a minor cut, they bleed excessively. So what is the problem with those individuals? Those individuals, so in humans, in humans, they are individuals, individuals lacking, lacking the clotting factor, lacking the clotting, the individuals lacking the clotting factor, the clotting factor are called hemophilia. They are called hemophilia. These are individuals that bleeds excessively even from a minor cut. Why? Because they lack the clotting factor and they are found to be hemophilia. Hemophilia and this is the end of our lesson. Thank you.